Hello everyone, my name is uh, Karthik and I'm a, a scientist here working in the field of experimental physics. So before we take a tour of this lab, uh, let me give you a brief uh, perspective about the kind of research activities that we do here. Now all of you are familiar with a periodic table. It basically has elements which can be of various kinds, it could be solid, liquid, gas, or it could be categorized as metals, semiconductors, or insulators. Now what we do is to bring all these elements together, we pick and choose these elements to form compounds, and these compounds are special compounds which we can also call as quantum materials, uh, and, and the application of these quantum materials is primarily to, to explore new fundamental opportunities in terms of its physics, and also translate it into technology which is applicable uh, you know, in anywhere in the industry today, whether it is uh, in terms of uh, you know, your gadgets as your smart laptops, your smartphones, or your computers, or it could be something very sophisticated uh, for defense or military. Now, all this work that we do here is based on a concept of thin film technology, where we don't really make bulk materials, but we try to engineer atom with atomic precision the arrangement of these atoms on surfaces and thereby try to probe its properties which could be electrical, optical, or uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, magnetic. And all these three, three properties has its own merits and applications as I just mentioned. So with this, uh, now let us start the lab tour and my students will, will explain you the various lab activities that is going on here. Hi guys, this is Quantum Materials and Transport Lab of TIFR Hyderabad. This is headed by Karthik Raman and a lot of grad students and postdocs carry out their research here. And today we will be showing you our lab and what happens in our lab every day. So come on in and let's have a look. student here uh, works on uh, growing quantum materials and today we will uh, learn from him what he does uh, using his interesting equipment. Yeah, so this is the MB and it stands for molecular beam epitaxy and uh, this helps us to make thin films out of any material that you can choose from a periodic table. So um, so these thin films that I'm talking about, they are they are very thin and uh, if you can, I, if I can give you an idea how thin it is and it's about 10,000 times th thinner than, uh, than a sheet of paper. And uh, the reason why we, we are doing this thin film study is because if you look around, if you look at the gadgets that we have in, a, in our everyday life, so for example mobile phones, smartphones and laptops, they are all made out of uh, microprocessors. Now these microprocessors are the result of the experiments and the, and the advances in the physics uh, for last few decades, but still we do not understand it to the full extent, especially with the materials that have come up in the uh, in the very recent times, and we need to we need to really do experiments to know more about them. But before we we, we do start doing experiments, we have to make these films, and this is this has a control of about uh, this you can control it down to a single layer of any material that you can choose for example a metal or uh, insulator or if you talk about more exotic materials such as superconductors and the more recent materials such as topological insulators so you can do you can make these films here and then you can start doing experiments with it so you say that you can grow materials atom by atom yes so you can make atom stack another atom layer on top of each other so that's the beauty of this instrument so you can you can have that much of control can you show us your equipment? Yeah. So, uh, how do you make thin films? Uh, it's basically you need a substrate, you need something on which you want to deposit, and then uh, you need a holder on which you can mount the substrate. This is the holder, and this is the substrate mounted on the And then what you do is you put it inside the chamber, but it has to go through certain, certain. Uh, you have to. It has to go through a number of chambers in between. So this is called a load lock, and you mount. 
right. and uh, this chamber is a small one so it's relatively easy to uh, pump it and this can be done without the breaking without breaking the vacuum of other chambers this is how the journey of a sample starts And then you can, uh, it has some arms, mechanical arms, which you can have a control on, and it can move to the MB. Now, uh, inside the MB, what you do, so you can deposit these materials by evaporating them. And uh, the way you evaporate is basically just heat it up and then let it boil and, you know, just go, go up in the air, just like water boils. Yeah, so there is a catch here that you cannot do this experiment in open air. That's because when the atoms are going and sticking on the substrate, there are a lot of dirt and other unwanted materials that can also go in and stick to it. And that basically uh, can make your whole film bad. So the way you do it is basically perform the same experiment in the vacuum. And uh, to create vacuum, we use a series of turbo pumps. As you can see here, there is one turbo pump here. And it basically sucks out all the air inside the chamber, in this chamber right now. So I'll show you the various parts of the MB. So this, in this part is where all the sources are kept. And uh, this is where it heats up and goes and deposits on the on the substrate. And uh, from here, you can there is a viewport here, glass viewport, which through which you can see the sample uh, and maneuver it in whichever way you want. Uh, so there are there are water lines here, which uh, keeps the body cool because you're heating a heating a source. So you need to keep the things around the source cool. Otherwise, they will all st also start evaporating. And there are a lot of materials in, inside which has different uh, different evaporation temperatures. And uh, there are two ways we can evaporate these materials. One is to just heat it by coils and then uh, uh, let it evaporate. But then there are few materials which has much higher evaporation temperatures, for example, metals. So what we do there is uh, we bombard high energy electrons and uh, heat it up to extreme temperature so that it eventually starts evaporating. And uh, once all these films are made, you can bring it out and start experimenting with it. So if, if, there, if there is a need to uh, evaporate a material which is even higher temperatures, there is, there is a method called sputtering that will be discussed later in this video. the basic schematic of the sputtering this is the gas inlet where we float the uh, basically inert gases into the chamber and this is uh, the substrate holder where we will mount our substrates and this is the target of the element which we want to deposit on our substrate okay then a high potential is uh, uh, provided in between your target and your substrate then the inert gas present here will dissociate into positive and negative ions and these uh, highly energetic positive ions will uh, knock out the uh, atoms from the target surface and gets deposited on the substrate. This is just the uh, simple mechanism of the sputtering and I have shown just all these things by uh, this schematic. Now uh, I will show you how these things are done in our actual chamber. Let us go there and see. Uh, this cubicle chamber is our actual sputtering chamber and these are the gas lines from, from where the gas is flowed into the chamber and uh, flow is maintained. This is the turbo pumps for the vacuum creation and I have already mounted the substrate inside the chamber and I have already maintained the argon flow. Now we have to just switch on the power supply and create the plasma. Okay, let's go there. Now I'm just switching on the high voltage. Uh, you can see this current is coming. This is basically plasma current. This is around 123 milliamp. Now we can go in the chamber and check our plasma. Uh, 
there is the sample i have we have mounted in the load lo and this purplish color is plasma so thank you suman for your explanation of the sputtering so if we have to take a one liner sputtering is a technique where materials are evaporated using plasma technique now let us move on to the scanning tunneling microscope which is on the other part of the lab uh, come along here we go so this is a scanning tunneling microscope here which uh, will be explained by uh, karthik and uh, it's up to karthik now okay so now what you see here is an instrument called the scanning tunneling microscope so the purpose of this instrument is is primarily to image surfaces with atomic resolution and uh, how we do this is that we start loading a sample from the load lock which was explained earlier and we grow our samples films in the, in the chambers and finally we move it to this microscope and what we do here is you have a tip it's a tungsten tip which is very close to your surface and it's at the level of few angstroms and we make this tip scan over the surface to primarily look at the uh, atoms and look at the properties of these atoms as a function of applied magnetic field or applied bias and this essentially gives us very exotic uh, uh, inferences about about the classes of materials that we are probing whether they are semiconducting magnetic or non magnetic so uh, so with this uh, you know i can explain uh, on this computer here uh, how the images are taken okay so this is an image of a surface of graphite where what you see here are nothing but arrangement of atoms periodically arranged essentially you and each spot the yellow bright spot are the carbon atoms and you can see they form a hexagonal structure which essentially gives you an impression about the kind of arrangements through which these carbon atoms are placed in your graphite so this instrument i explained to you that it 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 essentially allows you to image surfaces with atomic resolution now uh, one more capability of the instrument is to be able to go down in temperature you can go down to extreme low temperatures which helps in in improving the image quality because you now the atoms no longer can vibrate when you go down when you cool down your system your material the atoms in the material cannot vibrate much and that essentially improves the quality of your imaging so that's one of the things uh, that is special to this system where to be able to go down to this low temperature you don't need any liquid cryogenics uh, you need typically liquid nitrogen and liquid helium which are very expensive to be able to really cool down your system and maintain at low temperatures for a very long time but with the facility like we have right now we really don't have to worry about these liquid cryogenics uh, we can go to this base temperature using a cold head technology and 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 constantly measure 25 by 7 so now the instrument here that we have uh, is prone to any source of external noises and noises can be of various kinds mostly it's acoustic it's electrical and it's vibrational now we have made sure that we are we can decouple all these three sources of noise by a judicious choice of the design of the system now let's start with uh, you know the vibrational noise so we have this instrument which is housed on on a big piece big chunk of concrete mass it's almost 50 tons of concrete is sitting on sand and completely decoupled from the building foundations and this ensures that even when someone walks outside on the service corridor or you know really uh, walks with something a uh, very massive uh, piece of uh, equipment you really don't see any noise on your images that you acquire you can still see your surfaces with atomic resolution the other source of noise is the electrical noise to explain the electrical noise comes because when you have any instruments running across the other parts of the chamber uh it can give rise to line frequency noise which is of the order of 50 hertz and its harmonics you can decouple them by using a technique which is a, it's called a, it's called an uh, electrical isolator it's nothing up but a piece of ceramic insulator that decouples the two grounds of your system and it's therefore using this technique that uh, that we have adopted with this complete integration that makes this overall setup a unique in the country and also in the world in terms of the capability of imaging growth which can be done simultaneously without you know any interruptions 
Uh, so thank you, Karthik. So if we uh, learn uh, about this scanning tunneling microscope, basically images surfaces of uh, me uh, metals and it gives you pictures of atomic resolution. So now that we have grown materials and looked at them, we can also further go and measure their electronic properties. And there is a tool to do that and Satyaki will explain us exactly that. So let's go to the next part. So. Here is Satyaki. Hi. Hi. And uh, uh, Satyaki will explain to us what is uh, this interesting thing he is doing. After preparing the samples, uh, we use this instrument uh, to measure different electronic properties of those samples, uh, like uh, electron density, hole density, resistivity, mobility, conductivity, this kind of thing. So before measuring any of these properties, first we need to remove all the heat from the sample to remove any thermal noise coming from the vibration of atoms. So this chamber is basically a refrigerator which cools down the sample up to very low temperature, almost close to absolute zero. So this is a compressor that repeatedly compresses and expands helium gas and uh, doing this thing repeatedly it cools down the sample. So if you see this uh, thick uh, pi uh, pipeline, so helium gas comes through this line and uh, goes out. So if you see this steam, so this is our sample and we put this sample at the end of this stick and this stick goes all the way to the uh, bottom of this uh, cylinder. Okay, and if you see these cables, so these cables are connected to the sample and uh, to the controllers here. So these controllers basically measure temperature, current and voltages. We also uh, measure these uh, electronic properties of our samples at uh, different magnetic fields. So we have a uh, big magnet inside uh, this chamber. These controllers are connected to a computer here and all of our uh, experiments are automated. Uh, you can see uh, these uh, uh, data plots. These are basically a measurement that is going right now. So, so far you have seen a molecular beam epitaxy unit which grows ultra thin films, a sputtering unit, a scanning tunneling microscope and a dilution refrigerator which goes down to really low temperatures. So this was a virtual tour of one of the most exotic state-of-the-art la state labs in our country. If you are interested to come and visit our lab and have a look at the facilities here in person, you are most welcome. Please get in touch uh, with us via email and we will be happy to respond to you. And uh, thank you for your attention and I hope you all enjoyed uh, having a look into our lab. Uh, the floor is now open for questions and most of our lab members are here and you are most welcome to ask any number of questions that you like.